Okay, I have officially started recording uh, this open house session. Uh, my name is Pedro Santiago, for those who don't know me. Uh, I've been working in the financial aid department for about two and a half years. Uh, I'm gonna show you a brief over overview of the FAFSA and the Sierra Costa Promise. Uh, and then if you have any questions or concerns, uh, we could definitely go into those at the end of the uh, presentation. And also, um, Pedro is joined by uh, Julie Cornett, and I'll have her introduce herself in just a moment. And then my name is uh, Katie Bachman. I'm the Director of Outreach Services with Sarah Costa Community College. Um, I've been the director for about two years now, and um, I oversee a portion of the promise with your outreach hours. And now I'll let Julie introduce herself. Hey, everybody. I'm Julie Cornett, and I'm joining the session to kind of go over some of the academic supports available to you um, at Saracoso. And so I will be speaking after Pedro. All right, so the most important website you're gonna uh, learn about for federal aid is the studentaid.gov. I already have it loaded up. But again, it's simply studentaid.gov. About uh, a year ago, the government uh, just compiled all the forms of resources for financial aid and stuck on this website, where before you would have to go to each individual website. Um, so right now we're gonna review how to start a FAFSA account in the same, very same way that you do not, you have to have a Netflix account in order to watch a movie. You need to have a FAFSA account before you can actually file a FAFSA application. So once you're on the website, you will go up here to apply for aid, complete the FAFSA form. For a new student, you would click on the new uh, to FAFSA process. Again, it is very simple and intuitive. To create the account, you had to click on I am a student and then simply uh, click on the creation of an account option. At this point, it's going to ask you to put in the basic username, your email, password, just like any other form of an account. Uh, and then it's going to ask for very specific and uh, private information, your social security number, your, uh, your birthday, your full name, et cetera. Uh, once it's gathered all of this data and has um, verified that you have a working email and a working phone number, it will take up to three to five days to do a background check on you. That's just to make sure that one, you're an existing person and two, you're still alive. Because unfortunately, a lot of fraud does occur. Uh, so again, they're just gonna wait wait it out and just do that background search. Typically it's done in three days. Uh, at that point you are allowed to file for a FAFSA application itself. Once you have filed, you will be given the opportunity to log in. So right now I'm going to log in briefly to show you how it's going to present itself once you're in the portal. Uh, this is just a warning screen telling you that you are who you say you are. Like I said, unfortunately, a lot of fraud or attempted fraud does occur. You're just going to accept that. And then it takes you to your FAFSA screen. So for those of you who are uh, attempt wanting to take classes in the summer, you're going to have to file the 2019 to 2020 FAFSA. Uh, it's not the default one. It's the one that's on the second position. Um, the FAFSA years, they are uh, according to the school year, not the calendar year. So again, the summer aid section always goes to the prior year. For those of you who are interested in financial aid in the fall, you're going to click on the 2020 to 2021 section. Uh, the FAFSA itself, again, it's very straightforward. It's intuitive. Uh, based upon the answers you give, the questions will change. The information they required of you, require of you will change as well. From here, I'm gonna check my chat, see if there's any questions. Okay, none at the moment. So once you file your FAFSA, uh, one in three students are selected for a process known as verification. Basically, this is just the government asking Sierra Coso or any other college you attend to verify some of the claims you have made on your FAFSA. Uh, if you are selected for verification, we will notify you. Uh, let me share my screen, okay. You will be notified 
within Sierra Coso. So let me take you there. You're gonna have to log into your Insight CC. Just click on financial aid and you go to eligibility. Now you select the year that you're interested in getting aid. So I haven't filed or a FAFSA to Sierra Coso this academic year. So I'm gonna go from the last year because I was taking a few classes. And from here, it would display if I have any requirements. So if I was asked to verify my tax claims, the claims regarding my household size, um, claims to prove that I have graduated high school, et cetera, this is where it will be displayed from Sierra Coso. Um, most of the time, it's just, again, a simple one or two claims that need to be verified. Uh, they will provide a link if there is a form that's necessary, and you will be able to download the form on that link as well as turn it in through there. Let me check the uh, chat to see if I have any uh, questions at this moment. Nope. Okay, so from at this point, does anyone have any basic questions regarding the FAFSA itself? If not, I'm going to move on to the Sierra Costa Promise Scholarship. Again, if you have any specific questions regarding your the details of your account, we should do that after the recording stops, just because some sensitive data might be displayed. Sorry, I'm going to unmute everyone. Does anyone have any follow-up broad questions? Okay, so deadline dates to uh, apply for FAFSA. I just got a question on that. So the deadline dates, um, it, the FAFSAs are presented online at the start of October. Right, I'm going to mute everyone. So the deadlines for FAFSA, the FAFSA is presented in October. Uh, I would recommend applying sooner rather than later, just because we want to make sure you get your money as quickly as possible. Uh, moreover, if you are selected for a verification, we want to get that out of the way, again, sooner rather than later. Um, in regards to deadlines, there is no technical deadline other than the end of that academic year you're requesting for, uh, you're requesting financial aid for. Um, however, if you wait until the last minute and apply, there might not be enough time to actually process your data and therefore you actually don't get aid, unfortunately. I have a second question asking about income cap. Uh, that's going to vary, unfortunately. I can't tell you a, a broad guideline. Um, it's going to vary based upon your household size in accordance to the money, the income levels are coming in. Uh, again, the FAFSA itself will explain this when you're answering it and it will change according to the answers you put in. So it doesn't look like there's any more questions, so I'm gonna go on to the Sierra Costa Promise. After you actually, apply, how will actually, you, I have, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just gonna say, Pedro, there was one up above um, from, I think, Ashley D. Is there an income cap? I, I just, uh, there is actually one. technically no income cap. Uh, because it depends on your household. I have seen some individuals who have, you know, maybe bringing in at least 120000 a year or so, but they have eight or nine people in their family. So it's going to adjust to take that into account the same way that maybe someone who applies and only makes 25000 or 20000 and then there's, there's just one person. The income cap changes according to the household size, along with other factors that you put into the FAFSA. And in regards to how will you, uh, after you apply, how will you know when you were approved? Um, normally, if you aren't selected for verification, you should see the update within your account once we start processing aid immediately. If you are selected for verification, once we receive the documents, it could take normally up to two weeks to process them and audit them before your award can be posted. So again, if you're not selected, the moment we get your FAFSA, it should display your award. If you are selected up to two weeks after you provide all the documentation, assuming there's no issues with the documentation. Have there been any changes to FAFSA because of COVID? At the moment with the FAFSA application itself, uh, no. Um, we, we, are we have been told that there might be some changes. If they are, they will be displayed very uh, clearly on the FAFSA page itself. But as of right now, the requirements, the application itself has not changed as a response to COVID-19. Any more questions before uh, Katie and I review the Saracosa Promise? 
Okay, well, like I said, specific questions can be answered uh, after the recording stops in case sensitive uh, information has to be shared. So when you get to the Sierra Coso page, you're simply going to click on admissions and records and scroll all the way to the second to the bottom, Sierra Coso Promise. So the Sierra Coso Promise, as you can see, is the uh, scholarship that's for new students, continuing students, and returning students. Uh, the requirements are going to change slightly according to each cohort. However, they are generally the same. You're going to have to be a current uh, resident, with the exception of Trena residents, they qualify for the Sierra Coso Promise. Um, if you, you live in Inyo County or Mono County, there are separate applications down here. Would we'll definitely review them. You're going to have to be a full-time student if you want to qualify for the Sierra Coso Promise. Uh, prior to becoming that full-time student, you will have to see an educational advisor or counselor uh, to make an ed plan and uh, com uh, commit to orientation so you're aware of the basics of the system. Um, at that point, you will have to uh, keep up satisfactory uh, academic progress. So you have to pass your classes, attend, etc., as well as commit to eight hours of outreach service. Uh, currently, we are not requiring students of the outreach service, uh, however, because of the COVID uh, pandemic. However, normally that is something you contact uh, Katie Bachman's office about the outreach. Uh, Katie, did you want to go a little into what type of activities you, they normally commit to? Um, well, first, actually, I want to talk about just a little bit um, for our um, either new students or even continuing students or even returning students um, who are looking at applying for Promise. Um, there's very, very simple uh, requirements that you just need to keep a, um, an eye out on. Um, one of the biggest things is to obviously be a resident of Kern County. Um, I think that some of the some of the questions that come about are for new students, especially the ones right out of high school, um, is being enrolled in that math and English course, um, and that is not a requirement for the first semester. It's just an initiative that we're trying to get our students to take a math and English class within their first year. So um, there's a little bit of discrepancy on the website. So if you have any questions about that, um, please reach out to myself or Pedro. Um, for returning students, um, we are just asking that you're over the age of 18 and that at some point you've attended either um, BC, which is Bakersfield College, or Porterville College, or um, Saracoso with a minimum uh, with a 2.0 and you um, left in good standing. Um, and then that way you're eligible for the promise. You just need to be enrolled in 12 or more units. Um, go through orientation and complete your education plan. So I think there's some, there's this, the requirements are the same for most of them, um, but if you're a returning student or continuing student, we want you to, to, to know that you can apply for the Promise. This Promise program is not specifically for students right out of high school. The Promise program is also available for our continuing students and our returning students. So please um, don't think that you're excluded from this. And um, as far as outreach hours, um, you know, we say, Eight hours is not that much, and it really isn't that much. Uh, we have so many activities um, when we return in the fall, hopefully on campus. Um, even if you're also an online student, we have ways for you to do your outreach hours. You work through my office. Um, we get to do a lot of fun events. We do barbecues. We do the star party. So there's a lot of opportunities, and also we reach out and communicate um, several times throughout the semester with our Promise students. We do mixers, things like that. So. Um, eight hours is very easy. So again, if anybody has any questions, um, they can always reach out to uh, myself at um, outreach at saracoso.edu, or you could always uh, touch bases with Pedro. Yeah, I'm actually going to provide my direct number uh, in the chat right now. So anyone could reach out to me regarding the promise. And to add to that, because I, I didn't cover it, so normally the award for the prom scholarship can go up to $1,000. However, uh, in cases where you're getting so much aid, whether that's through the ASA and, and other scholarships, if that uh, $1,000 puts you over a certain limit of aid and it reduces your, say, your federal Pell uh, eligibility, we will reduce the, fat, uh, the scholarship from the Promise program 
in order to keep you eligible for the uh, FAFSA, the Pell, because that's obviously more important long term. And that and is, and that is per semester. Correct. Per semester. So I'm gonna mute everyone briefly, just see if anyone wants to either in the chat um, ask a question or just out loud regarding the promise at this point. Okay. So I just got a question in the chat. If students qualify for FAFSA Pell Grant, how do they get their money? You'll get your an email from uh, it's a company called Bank Mobile. Now, Bank Mobile is a company we have hired to help facilitate the movement of the money because traditionally all we did was mail out a check, and that could take up to two weeks to reach to you. Uh, Bank Mobile actually reaches out to students prior to the beginning of the semester. However, they only have the uh, the information you provided Sierra Coso. So if your mailing address is outdated, your preferred email address is outdated, they're gonna send it to that outdated information. So it is ultimately on the responsibility of the student to provide valid data. So they can send you a letter and an email with instructions on setting up your portal so you can choose how you wanna get your money, like a direct deposit or a mailed out check. So there's another question on if the EMT program qualifies for federal aid. Uh, all AAs and ASs do qualify for aid in regards to certificate programs, not all of them do. The EMT is one of them. It would not qualify for federal aid just because of uh, it's not, it does not require students to take English or math to my knowledge. And that is one of the requirements to get federal aid. You need to cover the basics. So again, I would double check with your counselors. Um, again, if it's not requiring, requiring math or English, unfortunately, uh, the FAFSA would not cover that. The same with the, uh, the promise. And uh, I had a question regarding a follow up on that. Um, those programs would qualify for state aid if you qualify for state. So, like the uh, uh, California Promise, uh, California College Promise Grant, which waives the cost of your classes, you can still qualify for that if you sign up for the EMT. That is uh, an award you get actually by fi uh, filing your FAFSA, though. So, you would still have to file your FAFSA even if you're not getting federal aid. So uh, uh, another follow-up question is if students have to sign up for Bank Mobile. It's definitely recommended just because it helps uh, facilitate the movement of the money quicker. For a regulation, if a student has not signed up for Bank Mobile, they have to wait three weeks before they generate a check and mail it out to the default address on record. And like I said, if that address is outdated, it's going to complicate things after the check has been mailed out. They can reissue one but they have to have the updated information from you, which again means you have to update it within the Sierra Coso system. All right, so unless there's any more questions specifically for FAFSA or Sierra Coso Promise or general, um, I'm gonna move it on to Julie. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna be here after the recording to answer any specific questions if you have to go into details about your account. Okay, everybody, um, I've joined up to talk about um, academic support services. Once you're a student at Sierra Coast, so you have access to um, a tutoring center and a really great library, um, most of which is online right now with the COVID. So I just wanted to really quickly um, share with you um, how to access those services. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully you are seeing my screen here, I'm, I've landed on the library um, from the Syracuse main page. If you go to student services, you can get to the library under here under academic assistance. Um, also, if you're logged into a Canvas course, which a lot of our courses have a Canvas accompaniment or if you're taking an online class, you can, um, you can click down here on services and get taken to the tutoring page or the library page or the proctoring page, career center. Um, we try to link you to our services quite a few different ways, whether you're inside your online course shell or if you're just uh, um, starting here at the main uh, Saracoso page. Um, so I'm just really quickly going to go over the library. Um, 
when you're taking classes at Sierra Croso, you will increasingly get instructors who require you to use library resources, uh, scholarly journals located from our, our databases. So we have a wonderful collection for a college of our size. Our library is very, very large. We have about um, 30,000 electronic books in our collection. We've got 20,000 books in our print collection at the main campus. And then we've got article databases that literally has hundreds of thousands of articles from um, scholarly journals and magazines. And then we also have, um, this is how you can connect live with uh, or via Zoom right now during the, the COVID lockdown. Um, you can Zoom with us just like we're doing now if you have research questions, if you have citation questions, if you need help with your research paper. That's primarily the type of student questions we get. Um, and then you can go to the Learning Assistance Center to uh, get help with math and writing as well. So we've just got a lot of um, seamless assistance for you all. Um, great collections, great hands-on um, assistance. And then another thing I wanted to point out is we do have reserved textbooks. So we try to keep a copy of every single textbook for every single class at our main campus library. And uh, for classes offered at the sites like Bishop Mammoth, KRV, you can also see that we've um, created this list that uh, showcases what site the book is at. So we try to keep a current textbook for every single on-site class offered at, at, um, at, at, at each of our campuses. And then at the main campus, we also keep copies of all the online books. So if you haven't got your financial aid check yet and um, you don't have your book, um, please contact us and use our collections. It's a, it's a very popular collection. We have students coming in and, and um, accessing uh, their textbook this way instead of, um, of buying a book or you know, waiting for um, their financial aid check to come in. Did, any, did someone have a question at this point? No? Okay, I thought I heard something. Um, so that's, I'm not going to really delve into our research databases because once you become a Syracuse student, you'll definitely be, um, uh, your instructors will um, have us join your class and um, show you how to use the resources. We also offer a one unit um, library research course and it is a requirement for getting your local AA at the college. And then we have a three unit course that covers it more in depth. And that is if you're transferring to CSU, it meets one of the um, lifelong learning requirements. So um, we offer the class, we join classes um, that have research components to them. Um, I am going to toggle over to the tutoring center under student services. If you go to the learning assistance center and the reason I'm covering them both is because when we are on campus and when we are not stuck at home um, and when they finish the earthquake repairs, the Learning Resource Center is one two-story building at the main campus. And on the bottom floor, it's the library. On the top floor is the Learning Assistance Center. Again, the difference between the two is the library is where you go to access the collections and to get help with research and citations. And the Learning Assistance Center is where you can get exam proctoring, um, tutoring um, from peer tutors on a variety of subjects, including online tutoring. You've got the math and writing labs where you can just uh, pop in. And um, we've got instructors working in the lab, math and English instructors to just help students. And then we've got computer labs up there. Um, Katie, did you want to add anything that Tyson, our learning assistance coordinator, wanted to add? I, th I think I've kind of covered the math and writing labs and the tutoring and the exam proctoring um, that he wanted us to cover for him. Yeah. Did you talk about the net tutoring? Did you mention that? No. Um, can, do you want to go over that? What sure. Is sure. Um, so there's also um, net tutoring. It's um, online only. It's 24 hours, seven days a week tutoring service that services um, many different subjects that we have here at Saracoso. Uh, net tutor, um, let's see, 
are all college graduates who hold either a bachelor's or master's degree in the subject. So they're very well versed in the subject and they're able to help you. And again, this is an online service through NetTutor. Um, okay. So I think that was one thing that he definitely wanted to mention for sure as well. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, we're all kind of getting used to, you know, offering services online now and the library was already doing that a lot and now the tutoring center is kind of jumping on board. Um, well, they've been doing it for a while now. It's just going to be interesting to see once fall semester rolls around, um, which of the online components we're going to continue to do. Um, really hoping we are back um, on campus in the fall. I know we're all crossing our fingers for that to happen, um, but we do have a lot of um, remote and virtual Zoom sessions like this in the event that we continue to have, that we are closed again in the fall. We want to assure you that we've got all these wonderful online assist, academic assistances for students. Um, so that's kind of it. I mean, I, I know that students really joined this session to learn more about financial aid. So I don't know how many are just really like, super excited about learning with the library but um I, well, I, yeah. I, I see a question on 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 here and i don't know if you addressed it yet julie how do yeah you, i don't how, see the chat because i'm sharing this, my how do we use those collections during the COVID 19 so how do they access oh, okay your... so the um anything we have in print so if um anything we have in our physical library like you can see this picture of books on shelves that those books on the shelves have not been accessible for a long time because of the earthquake but um we've always tried to purchase more electronic collections than print because we have bishop mammoth krb and we have a lot of students taking classes online but to access our collections you either have to uh, you, you need to know if you want to be looking for a book or an article um, and I know, a, I know a lot of libraries have a single search box where you're searching across the entire collections, and we don't have that right now. Um, but if you want to search for books, this is our, this is our catalog, and you can um, just search the library catalog for books on um, motivation, for example, and to access these books. So the, you, can, you can limit it to um let's see it, 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 it gets you to the books um and then it'll say available online here if it's an online book and then you would just open open that up um and then you would just really just read the book online it's you you're not going to download it onto a kindle or anything but we do have the um the book online and you would just open it up and voila so again we have um you know 30,000 ebooks on topics that cover that tr that we tr we we um, we curate collections that support all academic subjects so we've got the books and then in our databases is where we've just got some incredible um journal article access so when you're when you're in, when, when your instructor says you have to use you have to write an eight page research paper and all of your sources have to be um peer reviewed articles that's when you're going to go like oh that's what she was talking about in the library um, we've got uh, right now i'm actually working in the gale literature uh, resource center i'm someone i'm helping a student right now via email they're they want um, articles on revenge and shakespeare so <laughs> I've opened up this um, this literature database, and that's where I'm finding articles on there that you cannot find for free on the open web. And that's another really important distinction on why you would use the library um, versus just Google uh, Google your your resources, because we just have a lot more quality, scholarly, um, very expensive resources that you just simply cannot find for free on the open web because they're locked in these subscription databases. And again, Saracoso is a very small college, but we have as many as Bakersfield College. We probably have more databases than larger colleges because we're so spread out and we've been really trying to curate collections that um, serve all of our students online. Any other questions?
you will have more questions once you actually start taking classes and and start getting these research papers assigned to you. So, um, oh, to con, I mean, again, we will probably keep this set up even in the fall when we come back um, to campus. Uh, you can always just pick a day to chat, to video chat with a librarian. Um, if you have questions about the library or need help with research, um, you can also click the contact link um, and reach us. Our phone numbers, our email addresses are here. Um, and then if you, if it's the weekend and you are desperate and your paper's due Monday and it's Sunday night and you have questions and you need help, just like NetTutor is staffed 24 seven, I believe, um, th this is staffed 24 seven, this Ask a Librarian chat box where you can be chatting with a librarian. It, it's not gonna necessarily be one of the Saracosa librarians because it's staffed by um, college librarians across the country um, but you can you can just get there's so many ways to get help um, on this page so um, that's kind of what I wanted to leave you with is that when you start taking classes and you need help whether it's tutoring or whether it's research help or whether it's ac accessing resources textbooks um, stuff to help get you through your your academics uh, that is what the library and the Learning Assistance Center um, are geared for. We've just got people waiting to help. So contact us anytime. And that's pretty much all I got. Thanks, Julie. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. I guess I will stop sharing my screen. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I'm gonna Again, uh, please reach out to Julie um, and or uh, Tyson Huff when I put that information up there as well. And Julie, before you leave, please put up your contact information. I know Fabian's been doing that. Um, but at this time, we'd like to see if there's any further questions about what uh, Pedro's talked about or even the promise. And then with Julie here as well, if there's any additional uh, questions, you can put in the chat, you can unmute yourself. Yes, and if you need to speak to an advisor as well, um, there is the information right there. Um, and also we do have Fabian on as well, just in case anybody had a shout out really fast regarding something with counseling. What, did I, did I see a question? Mm. You've got a, a thank you. She, uh, Ashley D didn't know that all of that was available online, so. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right, well, if there's no more broad general questions, like I said, I'm gonna stick around after the recording to uh, answer students' questions on financial aid, since again, that could kind of go into more sensitive details. Um, and then if it's really sensitive, I can uh, take down your info, give you my info, and we'll make a, an appointment via the phone so it's more private and go from there. Um. All right, thank you. Nice. Have a good day, everybody, and stay safe and healthy, okay? Bye bye.